everyone, and I thank you guys so much for tuning in to yet another episode of My Orchid Adventure with me, Maria Young. So in today's episode, what we're going to be talking to you guys all about is extreme cold temperatures and the devastating effects that it can have on our orchids. And also, I'm going to give you some tips in case you do experience some of the disasters that go along with this and some of the things that you'll be able to do to help to rescue your orchids. But before we go ahead and do that, I definitely want to take a moment to recognize my very important orchid peeps out there. I'm talking about the ones that definitely are a part of my orchid family familia, the ones that show me so much love and support and also engage with me in conversations and watch my videos. Indeed, I want to let you guys know that I see you guys and you guys mean so much to me. So with that being said, I want to go ahead and thank the followers. Mexican, Mexican Asian, Asian orchid, orchid mommy, mommy of four, of four. Flowers, flowers irises, irises orchid holic the, the orchid geek, geek. Olivia's Olivia, orchids orchid and, and more and a flores d orchid Sarah, Sarah Becker, Becker Ida L Miranda Orchid Explorer, Sophia's Creative Garden, and also Diary of a Plant Keeper. Indeed, I do appreciate and love you guys all. And Okay, so we're going to talk about some examples of what I actually encountered over my wintering process. I actually left many of my vandaceous orchids right outdoors because I was dealing with an infestation of the thrips and I definitely did not want to bring my orchids in and also bring those darn measly bugs inside as well because if you guys don't know, they can also bite not only orchids but they can also bite humans human beings as well. So indeed, not a very happy thought. And because my orchids did remain outdoors, they did experience some extreme conditions. Our temperatures actually dipped down into the low 30s and of course they experienced some frost and also unfortunately some freezing temperatures. Now of course it is very important that you do the research on your type of orchid because that is going to determine exactly how tolerant or less tolerant they are. And one of the indications that you might notice is the extreme yellowing that might start happening to your orchid leaf. That is definitely a sign that your orchid is not keen on the weather temperature at hand. And another telltale sign that the orchid is suffering from the cold temperatures is the fact that you're going to start to notice some very dark discolorations. As you see here, you're seeing a deep burgundy maroonish dark purplish color and you're seeing it in the leaves and if we take a look, you're going to also notice it in the pseudobulbs as well. And this plant right here is not normally like this in its normal state. In its normal condition, it is a very green plant. And this right here is my Cindy Banks and if we take a look at her leaves you're actually seeing multiple discolorations in her leaves. You're seeing the yellowish and then some orangey, also some reddish and purplish and maroonish colors all throughout and all of this indeed is taking place because of the cold temperatures that she did experience. Now once your orchid does experience the freezing temperature and it does have some effect from the frost, this is now what you will see some wilting and some desiccation and if we take a look down here you're seeing extreme discoloration in the aspect of browning and also blackening and if we take a close look you are seeing that extreme pitting going on in the leaves as well. And here's yet another sign where this orchid actually literally shows burn mark from the actual frost itself. And the burn marks resemble exactly what the orchid would look like if it got burned by the sun. Exact identical markings. And this right here is one of the most scariest signs that you really don't ever want to see. This is showcasing the fact that this plant is now waterlogged 
which means that there is moisture and wetness that is trapped into the plant. And once moisture is trapped within the plant, it is now very susceptible to bacteria and also fungus attack on your plant. So indeed, you have to treat this rather quickly by cutting off the area or taking this leaf completely off because that's what I would do. And then of course, treating it with fungicide as well. So indeed, this is a very scary sign right here and we have to move diligently to save this orchid. But I will have to admit, even though my orchids did show some extreme reactions to the cold climate, I didn't experience the most extreme cases. Because in your most extreme cases of your orchids becoming frozen, of course, you know, one of the results can be death. It can fatally succumb to freezing temperatures. So indeed, I am very fortunate that that did not happen. But I do have some tips for you guys. If you do experience experience some extreme temperatures and you are seeing that your orchids are showing some of the signs that I showed you today. Once you do notice some extreme discoloration in your orchid, it is very important that you go ahead and remove those discolored leaves or those discolored section in your orchids so that if it is infected by any type of bacteria or fungus, it will not spread throughout your entire orchid. Now remember, always use sanitized equipment when cutting your orchids. And of course, each time you cut off section of that orchid and want to move on to the next, make sure that you go ahead and sanitize your equipment again. And you can also apply cinnamon powder to the wound area and that is going to assist to prevent infections. And if you do have an orchid that is showcasing some pretty extreme signs, here are some further tips that you may follow. As you guys know, there is so much information online and some information actually cancels out and contradicts other information. So indeed, it can get pretty confusing. And the thing is, what you're gonna have to do is really decide for yourself what is most logical for you and what you believe is gonna work out for your orchid. And that is all you can do. It is a trial and error basis in some case. So I'm gonna give you some tips of what I would do do with my orchids. It is recommended that in the most extreme cases where an orchid suffers from frost and being frozen, that you take that orchid and ensure that it is not in direct or high light situations. You are actually going to want to remove it and put it in a very shaded area, in an area also with high moisture, so that that orchid will not run the risk of becoming dehydrated. And once you found a very safe spot for your orchid, you are actually not going to want to water that orchid at all. And usually they say not to water it for at least two weeks, or you can also wait for signs of growth on that orchid. And once you see signs of growth, only then would you begin to water it again. And then a week after that, you can perhaps begin to fertilize it again. Um, understanding that the orchid is still in a weakened state, so you are gonna have to be very very careful and be very cautious with the orchid. Now the reason why they don't want you to water this orchid for at least two weeks or until signs of growth in that orchid can be seen is for the simple fact that if it is waterlogged or if there is moisture in that orchid, you do not want to accelerate that process of possible infection in that orchid. If there is water logged in there, it is susceptible to fungus and also bacterial infection and that is definitely what we don't want. Also another good thing that you may want to provide for your orchid is offering it some fungicide to fight off any fungus infections or probable fungus infections. So indeed folks those are my tips for you and I'm hoping that this is helpful for you. If you've experienced anything like this with the freezing temperatures and you've seen something that worked for you that you would like to also share with others please be sure to post those comments below. Definitely would like to hear from you guys because that is how we're gonna learn through your experiences. So indeed, sharing is caring. And if it is true with the saying that says that every cloud does have a silver lining, I do wanna tell you that it is said if your orchids do experience some pretty extreme temperatures, then you may expect 
to see some rapid production of some orchid spikes and I do have to say it does appear to be true in my garden that is the silver lining on my orchid blossom that indeed I am beginning to notice many many spikes and blossoms that are going on with my Vanda orchids here is my Mimi Palmer cross with a cool ton of fragrance and this is my Denisoniana cross with an insignis. And this is my UFO orchid, my unidentified fabulous orchid. And here is my Denisoniana cross with a dairy eye. And there goes her spike right there. And this is my Denisoniana. This is the Alba form. And there's her pretty little spike. And this right here is a tiny little guy. It's a Vanda Coltana fragrance crossed with a Lazunica. And if we do take a closer look, do you see that right there? That indeed is its spike. Such a little guy and it wants to grow up so fast. Here's another one that created its spike and now it is in bloom. And look here, this is my ugly duckling orchid if you've seen that video. And indeed, if we take a close look, look at that right there. Indeed, she is spiking as well. And we've already had our prior blooms. And here's another UFO. My Mimi Palmer cross with a thong chai. And if we look close right here, oh my gosh, it wants to produce some seed pods. It is interesting to watch and maybe one day I'll have them actually develop for me somewhere. Who knows? My very faded but did bloom orchid right here, my Asuka Senda Sucantharat. And also this Vanda Kralurk White cross with a Charles Goodfella. Indeed, it is faded as well, but yes, she was one that has already bloomed. And another beautiful prior bloomer right here is the semi Tarit Vanda. So indeed, that is the silver lining to this entire experience. And there you have it, folks. And I thank you guys so much for tuning in to yet another episode of My Orchid Adventure with me, Maria Young. And if you guys like this video, please be sure to give it a green thumbs up. And of course, if you want to stay tuned to the latest and greatest orchid adventures with me, please be sure to subscribe. Also, you can join me on my Facebook adventures as well at My Orchid Adventures right on Facebook. And you guys already know, indeed, I do love you all. Anna's Flores D Orchids, Sarah Baker, and hold on tight, it is pretty windy in my garden. Don't blow away, folks. Yay! But before we go ahead and do that, I definitely want to take a moment to recognize my important orchid piece. It's like a club scene in my garden with all these cars passing by, pumping that music. So let's get the orchid party started. Oh. Okay, sorry about that. Let's take 101. And.